Welcome to the SCMP studio, Andrew. Thank you, Dominic. It's lovely to be here. So Stanford American School Hong Kong is opening a new campus in West Kowloon in the next school year. Please tell us some of its main offerings and also how they can help you deliver a more holistic education. Yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to have a, a new pre-university site. It's a particular campus that is set up specifically for those children of grades 9 to 12. That's going to set them up with the greatest chance of success. So we've got collaborative learning spaces. Uh, we've created quiet environments which can really enable that sort of deeper cognition to take place collaborative individual learning spaces, libraries, specialist spaces for drama, black box theatre, lounges for them in which they can relax, uh, areas where they can work together in what we refer to as their neighbourhoods. So yeah, fantastic opportunity for them to really, really make the most of something that is specific for them because you do want children of that age to have a different learning experience at 16 from that of a six-year-old. Your school has a um, pre-primary to grade 12 uh, through train education model. Please tell us some of the main advantages of that. Yeah, model. transitions are much easier. You know, the fact that you're not going to a different school at the age of 11, you're not having to undergo that transition, you're very much in line with the keeping and the values of that school, but that transition is almost seamless. The experience you want to be different. So if they start with us at the age, as I say, of four or five, there's a good period of time before they, they then have to move on to university. What is it that we can be doing for our children when they are age six, seven and eight that really sets them up well for the future? And a good example of this is we have a fantastic uh, reputation for STEMing. Um, and uh, in being the innovation that we, we have in the school and the innovative programs. And that really takes from the youngest age a whole look at that program and that offering up to the age of 18. And those projects change and there's a lot of work between the staff at all levels. And that's really what one wants to create to be able to set these children really up for the future. Can you tell us some of the um, projects or um, initiatives that you do in both the primary school and the secondary mm. school in terms of the uh, STEM in program? The robotics, for example, is a really, really good example of this from the stage where actually they're learning to create their robots all the way through to entering at the senior level competitions. And so rooms are not like classrooms anymore like they used to be. You can write all over the walls. Um, we have this robotics table, which is a competition arena um, for the children that really then encourages them to not only develop their skills, but also um, for setting them up very, very well in the future. With the growing use of technologies like AI and also with a lot of global economic uncertainties, how do you and your teachers prepare students for the future? The World Economic Forum released a, a report back in January on the future of jobs, and that number one skill that children um, need is technological and related to AI. Um, and so we, we embrace that. So how we use it in schools has to be very, very carefully employed. Uh, the children have technology throughout the school, but it's giving them the opportunity to use it as a tool so that it helps them with their critical thinking. What a lot of um, the research has shown is that what we really need to do to set these children up for all the years to come, to jobs that we don't know that they're going to have, are those general soft skills that we all need to be able to go on and succeed. So a little bit about yourself. You joined the school in January. How are you finding it so far, and what do you like most about your job in the school? Yeah, really, really enjoying it. Stanford, fantastic school, going from strength to strength. Uh, we've just had our third cohort of uh, IB students, and those uh, students have had 25% uh, of their offers have come from the top 100 universities globally. So very, very pleased with that. It's been wonderful to be able to come in to get in and observe and, and really see how the children are going from strength to strength at all age ranges. Mm -hmm. You've worked at schools in the UK, the UAE and Singapore. So how does your experience inform the way you lead Stanford American School Hong Kong? I think they, say, they say there's no substitute for experience and I think experience across countries is, is even more valuable. Um, and so the, being in that position and of a certain age and of a certain number of years of experience where you know the difference that you can make to a school. And so in terms of taking a school forward and what is already a fantastic school, it's great to have that opportunity to do that. Well, thank you. Great to have you here today. Thank you.